guys welcome back to Rondell Designs I'm so glad you're here if it's your first time here welcome this video is a series of nine videos on how to turn your hobby into a business we're up to number eight to find the rest of the videos you can go to my channel and look in the playlist under turn your hobby into a business in 30 days each module discusses a different topic and they're all really helpful to get you literally from just having a hobby and turning it into an actual business and enjoy this video subscribe to my channel to be notified when my next video is up in this series welcome to module eight in this module we are going to talk analytics whether it be your website your etsy shop your market physical records of what you've sold or your social media platforms they all have analytics and analytics are the most amazing tool to track how your business is going, how you're going at getting people to your website or uh, platform wherever you're selling. And it's just so important. I really highly recommend setting up Google Analytics. That is amazing for seeing where your people are coming from to get to your website, where they're getting to in the stages of buying. Do they put stuff in their cart? How long they're staying on pages? That's really, really full on. It's a little bit of a process to set up Google Analytics. I'm doing a course on Google Analytics as we speak. Um, I'm very much not an expert, so I'm not even going to attempt to train you on Google Analytics. What I would recommend is looking at a website. It should have some information on about how to install your Google Analytics on Google Analytics itself, as step by step on how to install. Remember YouTube, oh my gosh videos there's so many videos on how to set up google analytics so you can do it it's there the code set into your website or whatever and you can then start analyzing traffic would also at this point recommend for you to set up your google pixel facebook pixel into your website or wherever you're selling from I'm sure whether you can set up a facebook pixel in etsy or not facebook pixel basically comes in very handy when you're wanting to start doing facebook ads down the track bit i wouldn't recommend jumping straight into facebook ads i mean you could if you wanted to if you got the money to do it and you you know what you're doing or you can pay someone to do it cool i think it's a good way a good thing to at, at the start just get some organic traffic coming into your place of business but putting the pixel into your website allows facebook to start collecting information about the people the types of people that are visiting your store then once you've got all that information it's always gathering it then when it comes time to do an ad potentially down the track all that information already sitting there waiting so that you can make the most of it as far as uh, targeting the right people who you want to attract to to your business to sell them your lovely products i'm going to do some screen recordings just to go and i'll go into my analytics on the various platforms and we'll just have a look and I'll give you a bit of an idea about what you're looking at Okay, so I'm just loading the Google Analytics app on my iPad. Normally, I would suggest using your desktop computer or laptop, but I just went into there before and it's just not, it's not playing nice. It's not giving me any data. So I'm just going in through the app, which you can also do on your phone. Um, now, this is basically, if you look on the top left corner, it tells you what analytics we're looking at. So it's Sunday, the August the 15th. Uh, versus Saturday, August 14th. So uh, it's literally, you can do daily comparisons. You can do weekly or fortnightly or monthly or yearly, quarterly, whatever. And you have a look here, it shows what time the most people during the day were on my site on Sunday. Uh, it's, yeah, it's got a bit of everything. It's got behavior overview, so you can see whether they came directly. Now in this bit, I'm changing the date. So I'm changing it to the last seven days. Uh, yeah, I haven't been very productive on my website. So the last seven days are very negative compared to the previous seven days. And you can go to the month and you don't have to compare it to the previous period, but you can see that little blue button on the side I've got compare set up and you can compare it to either the the previous um, date range before the one you're looking at or you compare it to last year at the same time you can compare it to lots of different things but it's just really interesting to have a look uh, you can see the number of users that have been on your site um, and now I've just decided oh you can have a look at all different things on the left hand side you can look at uh, new users, returning users, paid traffic, organic traffic. So if you're 
wanting to know sort of how people are coming to your website. Are they coming from social media? Are they coming from Google search? You can do, you can really research all that stuff. And you can even go into um, with Go the Google search, what words they're putting in. Um, you can see here, I'm looking at different countries, what countries people are ordering from. And then I'm just going and changing the date ranges again. So now instead of July, I'm looking at just the last 30 days and then comparing that to that same period uh, last year. And it's just, yeah, so the little green or the red, that is compared to the same time last year. So it's, yeah, there's lots to look at. There, there really is. You can go into, oh, then we're changing it to this month. I'm just having a little play around because I don't look in here as much as I should, that's for sure. You can set custom date ranges where you want to check. Uh, so I'm just, I think I went back to compare, like look at March just to see for a different, different month to see what my sales were back in March compared to the last the last month because yeah we're with um our recent lockdowns from COVID with yeah my sales actually dropped off quite a bit this time but yeah there's all different things you can look at there's so many different time blocks and you can compare to the previous period in this year or last year or whenever and you can see here like you can see right down who's in the process of buying did they stop when they put the item in their cart? Did they get to checkout? Did they proceed through checkout? There's all different things you can look at and go, okay, I wonder why that's happening. It gives you a really great insight. You can see what page of your website people are exiting. So maybe you'd look at that and go, okay, maybe that page isn't looking as good as it could. What could I do to improve the website for that sort of thing? You can see here uh, if they're looking on their mobile, their desktop, their tablet, um, I've had an increase for people looking on their tablet. Then you've got like social media, what country again. There's, yeah, there's all different sorts of, of analytics that you can look at. One of the really great things that I like about Google Analytics is to see what time people are on my website. So that can be a great way to know uh, when to post out emails uh, or uh, when to post on social media. And what I've been showing you is just the overview. But if you go on to the, see this left side here, there's all different things you can look at. You can look at the audience. So who is looking? where they're coming from, what country, what computer, uh, all sorts of things. So if you have a look down here, we've got mostly from Australia. Um, then you can, so that's just an overview of an audience, but you can go select all different things. So new versus returning customers. We've got a lot more new users and 25 more returning users. Then you can also look at paid searches. So if you have done some ads, either through Google ads or Facebook or wherever, I've done some on Pinterest recently. And then other areas you can look at is behavior. So there's overview pages, landing pages, exit pages. So let's see, this tells me what page people are exiting off my website. So a lot on the original art, which makes sense because I had an online exhibition last weekend. So a lot of people would have been looking at my original category. Also, I was promoting it a lot through my Instagram and Facebook. So people might have been curious and had popped in for a look, but didn't stick around. Um, and then I've looked at July. So yeah, it tells you what pages people are exiting from. I believe you can also set goals in your Google Analytics. I don't have anything in there though, so there was no analytics. Um, and then we've got e-commerce. So revenue, transactions, conversion rates, all that sort of stuff, all that good stuff is in here. And that is really good to look at on a month to month basis to track how you're going. And you can see here, this graph is actually showing me where people came from. So they came from direct or email or, and now what country they're coming from. So it's really good to know where your customers are actually coming through, especially the ones that are spending the money. 
And then over here on the right, of course, you can see revenue by time of day. So again, that tells you what time of day people are shopping on your website. So you could keep that in mind when you're planning promotions or emails and newsletters, social media posts, all that sort of stuff. It's all relevant. So now we'll pop into the Shopify admin. Uh, no, again, I would normally pop into this on my laptop, but today we're just going in through the app. So it doesn't have as detailed analytics, but gives you a little bit of an idea. So on the left of the side there, you'll see analytics. That's what you want to click on. Um, there's all sorts of different reports you can get through the Shopify analytics. So, so far this month to date, I've sold $119. Not great. It's very slow at the moment for my Shopify store, but that's okay. It gives you something to aim for. Uh, so, and it shows you how many people reached checkout in the last 30 days. Um, you can click on all of those things that are highlighted in blue to see more details. Um, $5.00 in a sale was attributed to marketing. So that's where they've come through either an ad or a promotion. You can get really deep in the Shopify analytics, but um, yeah, it just depends what you're wanting to look at. If you're wanting to see how an email campaign went or how a promotion went, I'm currently doing some ads on Pinterest. So I um, like to see what's happening there. Here is some search terms, which is really interesting. And like with your Google Analytics, you can change the date range. So you might want to look it up on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, so the three month period or yearly. And uh, it's really great to just compare how you're doing month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year. So now I'm just going to click on the finance summary. I don't come in here anywhere near enough. Um, but yeah, this is just for the month of August so far what sales I've had, uh, net sales without cost recorded. Uh, there's, yeah, lots of different categories you can go in and have a look at. Then we've got what's percentage of inventory sale. It's not really um, relevant to the way I have my business because I hand make a lot of my products. So I don't really need to see what percentage of my inventory has sold. I guess if you're bringing products in and you want to see how well each one's doing against each other, that would be a great way to do that. Um, online store conversion over time. Again, select a date range you want to look at. I like Shopify because it's automatically got all those pre um, options in there so conversion rate so that's I think there is a statistic that tells you what a good conversion rate I think it's around one to two percent I'm not sure um, but you can google what is a good conversion rate for e-commerce store this shows you I've done a weekly review some weeks have done a lot better than others uh, what else have we got here? Reach checkout. So this is great, this section, because it shows you how many people added a product to their cart, how many reached checkout, um, even back to the start here, how many sessions, how many added to cart, reach checkout, session converted and conversion rate. So that can tell you how many people really liked your product. Um, and if it drops a lot and didn't get to checkout, then maybe the process is a little uh, difficult or you could change something. Um, or if you've got a good high conversion rate, then that's, you know, you're obviously doing something right there. Now down the bottom here, I'm going to expand that. And what have we got? Session attributed to marketing. Um, so again, if you're doing Facebook ads or Pinterest ads or some kind of ads or email marketing, it will show you what, oh, look at that. I've got a Shopify cart reminder. So one of the sessions was from a cart reminder. So where people have put an item in their cart, but they haven't checked out, then Shopify can automatically send them a, hey, you didn't check out, here's 10% off or something like that. You can set up all different types of campaigns for abandoned carts. You could say, we'll give you this free product or free shipping or a percentage off, or just a reminder, you don't have to give anything off. Just say, hey, don't forget about this product that you, you were looking at, Okay, now we're going to pop into Facebook and have a look at my page. Uh, now listen, I normally business suite is the place to go for looking at analytics, but it's been an absolute pain in my behind recently. 
So I'm literally just going into the pages and then we're clicking on page insights. So this won't give me a lot of info, but when you're just starting out, this is great. It says most engaged posts for the last uh, last month, I've set it to last 28 days. See in the top there, you can set it to last seven days, last tw seven, 28 days. Um, and it shows you how many people have, it's reached and how many people have engaged with it. Then you can go down to your stories and see um, your most recent stories. You can then click on one of the stories to see some more analytics in there. So I've just clicked on one there. We had 22 unique opens, one engagement, which was a love heart reaction. Um, you can see people forward swiped 12 of people. So that means they weren't super interested in sitting on there and watching the whole thing. And you can also see the exits out of that story. Uh, we've got most engaged posts and that shows what, what of your posts are doing well. What are people liking? And that's a great way to know, okay, I need to post more of that sort of stuff because people really like that sort of stuff. Um, then you've got down the bottom here, you've got new page likes for the last week, new followers, um, page button clicks. I haven't had a lot of action on my Facebook page the last week because I'm having some issues with it. But yeah, that's another story for another day. Um, and then you've got, yeah, posts, stories, where your content is reaching people. So there's lots of different um, little basic things that you can get from your page analytics that will help you to then grow or attract new followers. Um, now, be careful of that bottom part where it says promote pages. You don't really wanna be boosting. You wanna be going into the actual ads manager, which is where you'll have your Facebook pixel linked up to your website. Um, down the bottom here, you can see where people are coming from, from for the people that who follow my page. And it also has what other people are interested in. So that's handy to know if you're going to do an ad down the track, you can target Target people who also like, for instance, Target Australia there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just as much as the information you can get for your following, the better. So that was just a really quick little insight into Facebook. Now, Instagram on the iPad obviously is sideways, so we'll just be in here for a quick second. So top right corner with the three lines, go in there, go into insights, which is about fourth down from settings. And then that will tell you, you can again do last seven days, last month. You can see what are your most popular posts? What are your most popular stories? What are people interacting with the most? That is a really great way, again, to see what type of posts are doing well, what people want to see who are following you do more of that and less of what's not being responded to well and then we're also going to have a quick peek at TikTok. whether or not you use it it's good to know you can go through the app to look at insights but you are better to go into the tiktok.com slash analytics okay so here's my dashboard for my analytics uh, it shows me my engagement and as you can see you can pick from the seven days 28 days 60 days uh, lots of views on my videos on TikTok. I had a couple go quite viral uh, last month, not so much this month. I haven't really made much of an effort in August so far, but you can also do a custom date range here, as you can see. So we're just going to select all of July to see how that month went for me. Um, you can do the views, you can do the followers, uh, so, and then you could go across to the buttons on the top there and see, it will tell you which, which, what your statistics are for the month. Yeah, down the bottom here, you can see the follower growth. So my, uh, yeah, like I said, I had a couple of videos go really well in um, July and August and, oh, July actually. So it went up quite a bit at the end of July there. And now you can do the specific date range for your followers as well to see your progress. Um, so yeah, it's been a bit flat the last couple of weeks because I haven't made much of an effort, but it's really good to re-inspire you to get back into it when you do look at the statistics and see how much it's actually um, affecting your progress. You can also see here what country the majority of your followers are, what gender they are. So there's lots of good information here and my favorite what time they are on because that is good to know for when the best time to post your TikToks is and mine is 8 p.m. And then just like with Instagram and Facebook, you can see what your most recent posts are and how well they've done just in a nice little snapshot there. 
or you can select trending videos and that will tell you what's the best, the most popular ones for the last week. Like, yeah, mine are pretty average this week, but it's really good to know when there's a big difference. Some videos will get 400 or 20,000 and it's good to see what's responding well. Now, last but not least, I just wanted to go into my YouTube studio, which is the analytics of my YouTube channel. This won't be rele relevant for all of you, obviously, only if you've got a YouTube channel, but I love the analytics in my YouTube channel. It's so good. So I go in here often and look at the last 365 days watch hours because I am um, I have a goal to be monetized on YouTube. So you need 4,000 watch hours. I'm up to 700 and something. Um, I can see my subscriber change. So again, you can pick the date range. It can be last seven days, last 28 days, last 365 days. Um, you can see your views. So or top uh, your views last 28 days. It shows me my top videos. So that's really great to know if um, some videos are going really well, then obviously you want to make more of that type of video and it gives you lots of great ideas. Um, and then lifetime, I've just changed it to lifetime. So what's the most popular videos over the time of my YouTube journey? And then I have got traffic source. So where they've come from, that's super, super important for YouTube. You want to know where your traffic is coming from. Most of mine is coming from my shorts, which are those little under one minute videos. They're trying to compete with TikTok, obviously, as everyone is at the moment. Uh, then we've got top external sources, so where they've come from if they haven't found me within the YouTube platform. Pinterest, see, I wouldn't have known that unless I'd seen that, that Pinterest is my top one for the last month. And that is probably to do with the fact that I'm running some, oh no, actually probably wouldn't be to do with my Pinterest ads. I've just put a few videos up there and linked to my Facebook, um, sorry, my YouTube channel. And... What else have we got here? Top YouTube search terms. So super important. You want to know what people are searching for when they're finding your videos. So I really love the YouTube studio. It's very, very informative and it keeps me knowing what videos are doing well. Um, and it's often ones that I wouldn't have thought. So what this is one that says what other videos are suggesting my contact content. So it will tell me what videos my ones are coming up at the end of. So yeah, YouTube Studio, absolutely amazing. Um, I've got little playlists. Obviously this playlist, which, which includes this video, how to turn your hobby into a business in 30 days, is my most popular playlist because it's a series of videos. So lots of information in there and I'm just loving YouTube and loving the YouTube Studio. So that is video eight for our how to turn your hobby into a business in 30 days. I hope you got something out of these analytics, even if it's just a little bit of familiarity within the platforms. And if you have any questions at all, please ask in the comments below. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you know anybody else that this could help, feel free to share. And video nine is coming out tomorrow. And then that is all of them done. You'll find all of those videos in this series under the playlist, turn your hobby into a business in 30 days. Thanks for watching and have a great day.